Do you ever have one of those days when a new Ferrari just won't do? When razzing around in an Aston hasn't got that neck-snapping reaction from passers-by that you really expect? No? Mommy neither. But if you do, then I have found the perfect car. This, the new Bentley Azure. It's the biggest, brashest, most expensive four-seat luxury convertible currently in production. It's as inconspicuous as fuchsia funeral wear and the length of a small train. It costs £222,000. It has the same amount of wheels as a Fiesta. The steering wheel's in the normal place and on the normal side, and it has uh, lights, as per. So how come this costs as much as my house? This isn't my house, by the way. Well, it does have a 6.75-litre V8 with not one, but two turbochargers. That gives it 450 brake horsepower, which means a top end of nearly 170 miles an hour. But smoking tyres don't really help us find out why the Bentley costs so damn much. Maybe the interior will. Well, to make an interior, first you need 12 of these. Cows. This one's called Daisy. And that little one is called Headrest. The cows come from Scandinavia, where there are no barbed wire fences to nick the hides. Because in a Bentley, everything must be perfect. Even tiny little insect bites can be grounds for rejection. But you're not just paying for those fancy materials, you're also getting some incredibly skilled labour. Take the steering wheel, for instance. Think of it like the car's handshake. Every time you get in it, you touch it, you fondle it, you caress it. And then imagine that this took one guy, one craftsman, 15 hours to stitch all these millimetre-perfect little bits all around the steering wheel. It constantly reminds you that you're actually... You're in something really special. You'll also need one of these. It takes two weeks to get the wood ready for the car. The veneers are hand cut to a thickness of just 0.6 of a millimetre, then laid out symmetrically so that the pattern on the left matches the pattern on the right. That pattern, by the way, is caused by a fungus that attaches itself to the roots formed over the course of at least 80 years. There's something really odd about driving this particular Bentley in that it gets under your skin a little bit. It feels, I don't know, I think the word I'm looking for is hallowed, like I should be wearing white gloves or at least speaking quietly. Or actually, in my case, just giving it back. Then we come to the roof. It's a piece of engineering Brunel would be proud of, although it's actually made by a German company. At seven and a half foot long, it doubles as a handy sail if the engine breaks. Two carbon fibre crucifixes tie the subframes to each other, meaning that the new Azure is 300% stiffer than the old one. But that means it's just 300% stiffer than a plastic bag filled with water. But surprisingly, chuck it about and it really handles for such a big car. But it isn't clever, nor is it groundbreaking. So again, I ask, how come it costs 222 grand? One of the reasons I reckon the Azure is so massively expensive is the fact that the people that are buying it are, you know, they're beyond rich. They just don't care how much money it costs. On average, they've got another eight cars in the garage, and there's already a 12-month waiting list for this very car. So Bentley, I don't know, they could have just charged what they like. People would have still bought it. We wanted to find out exactly what a typical customer thinks about a car that could easily be classed as vulgar and tasteless. Hello. Hello there. Um, is that Michael Winner? I'm afraid it is, yes. I wonder if you'd like to come and have a quick look at something I've got parked outside. Uh, not, not as I know. I'll come along then. Beautiful, thank you. I've just realised I'm wearing the wrong shoes. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. I'm nice Tom to Ford. See you, Tom. Gear. How are you? 
What do you think? The new Bentley is you. Bit flash, isn't it? It's not the sort of sedate gentleman's Bentley that it used to be, that mine is. Oh, have you got one? I've got a 1975 saloon, which is perfect. Dark blue leather, not this flashy white, you'll see. Those grills look like, should, look like they should be in a bathroom. But the wood is revolting, isn't it? The wood is like an Ikea, a kitchen gone wrong. I quite liked it. Yeah, well, you know, you've but got it's... a funny hat on. I look at the room at the back, you'd be crippled sitting there in about 30 seconds. Only if you've got leggy models in the back. That's not bad. That's your seating position, and that's not... Uh... That's well, but, bad, you know, really. I'm not that tall. You had a six-foot-three driver. If John Cleese, my friend, was there, the seat would be back another five inches. The back seat passenger would be dead. You couldn't get, <laughs> you'd have to get him out with a shoehorn. I can't believe I'm going to be chauffeur-driven by Michael Winner. You know, in my car, it's like you're sitting in an armchair. Here, it's like you're sitting in an office chair uh, at, at an executive meeting of the council in Staines. Now, we're going to go over humps now in the road. I think that's Perfect always an interesting test. test, because I'm used to going up here in my 75 Bentley and over the humps. Yeah, that's quite a soft hump drive, not bad at all. It's a nice car. No one could say it's not a nice car. But the price, it should be nice, really, shouldn't exactly. it? Exactly. There's quite a lot you could buy for the price of one of these. Currently listing at 222,000. My rolls only cost 8,300 from Harry Saltzman, the James Bond movie producer, except he had his initials in gold on it, HS, on all four doors. So I either had to change my name or respray the car. We're passing Richard Branson's house on the right. I was used to see him walking along this road. I said, Richard, can't you afford a taxi? <laughs> what do you think a Bentley says about you if you drive one? I think they're basically an old man's car that the, the rock groups have taken up because they are the top of the range and some people who get a lot of money and I don't blame them want to say to everyone look I've got a lot of money and here's proof of it I bought this car <laughs> well I've got a lot of money and all my cars are old do you have a stealth car if you just want to disappear yes I've got a, a, a Suzuki Grand Vitara <laughs> not automatic marvelous car well, there we are. We, we did all right. We what, did... what are your initial impressions of that, then? My initial impressions are... I can think of a number of girlfriends I've got who would love this car. <laughs>